thank you for listening to our sixth webinar of the 2023 CKF webinar series. This webinar will focus on donor families. It aims to support donor families and friends throughout the donation community and encourage others to become organ donors. My name is Anna Morgan Pilardi. I am the Program and Communications Director for the Chris Klug Foundation, or CKF, and I'll be introducing you to today's panelists and moderating this webinar. Um, I would first like to thank our generous sponsors, Hearts for Rest Foundation, who helped make this webinar series possible, and our wonderful partners today, Live On New York. Um, they do some wonderful work for, to support donor families in New York. Um, thank you to all those who have submitted questions before today's session. If you have further questions for any of today's panelists, please send them to info at chrisklugfoundation.org. If you're interested in any of the, the other topics we will be discussing during this year's series, head to chrisklugfoundation.org slash CKF webinar series. Now I'd like to introduce today's panelists and give them a moment to introduce themselves and the organizations that they're representing. So first I'd like to introduce Katrina, who became a donor mother after making the decision for her son Jaleel to become an organ donor. Since becoming a donor mother, Katrina became a life coach specializing in grief healing, CEO of Grief to Heal, a volunteer for Live on New York, and is the 2023 CKF Donor Hero Award winner. Thanks for joining us, Katrina. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. My name is Katrina. I am a proud donor mom. Um, at 18 years old, I lost my uh, five-week-old son, Jalil. And I decided to give the gift of life and donated his heart to a two-month-old baby boy and his liver went to an 11-month-old baby girl. And since then, over the course of years, I have um, decided to become a volunteer for Live One New York. I went back to where it started for me. And from my journey, I became a certified life coach um, specializing in grief healing. I have a company called Grief to Heal, where I do support groups for uh, people who have lost someone um, just to uplift and up courage and help them find a new way to grieve. Um, I also am a, of course, a proud donor mom and um and that's about it for me. Thanks, Katrina. And thanks for, you know, making the decision to give the gift of life. Um, so up next, we have Carol. Carol is a retired speech therapist. She was married to her husband for 20 years, and they enjoyed scuba diving, camping, and traveling together. She became a volunteer for Live on New York and Long Island Trio after her husband became an organ donor. Thanks for joining us, Carol. And I'm going to give you a few moments to introduce yourself. Thank you for having me. Um, my my journey he, through here became as hard as it was to have my husband in the hospital dying unexpectedly. The journey to become an or for him to be an organ donor was so easy, as opposed to all the hard decisions that we had to make while he was in the hospital. And so my decision to become a volunteer with Live On was based on how kind and how good they were and how they made my decision that much smoother to transition through. So that's why I am a volunteer with Live On and also with Long Island Trio. Thank you, Carol. And thanks for continuing to you know, work to promote the message. We really appreciate it. So next is Tara. She founded Taylor's Gift Foundation with her husband, Todd, after their daughter Taylor became an organ donor and saved five lives. She has since been involved as a board member for UNOS and speaks at, about Taylor's Gift nationally regarding her story and the foundation's donor family grief support program. Thanks for joining us, Ta Tara, and I'm going to give you a moment to introduce yourself and Tara, Taylor's, Taylor's Gift. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's okay. I'm Tara Storch. I, I live in the Dallas area, so I'm not in a New York state of mind the way y'all y'all are. But um, yeah, we Taylor was 13 years old. We were on our spring break vacation, and um, she had a ski accident. And wearing a helmet, doing everything right, and it was just an accident on the slopes that she had. And we were 
care flighted to Grand Junction, Colorado, where Donor Alliance was our OPO. We didn't know anything about OPOs at the time. Um, and, you know, realized very quickly um, that she would not recover. And just like Carol said, when we were asked about organ donation, you know, first of all, we had never talked about that in our family, not even once um, until we were faced with it. And it because the type of child she was at 13, um, we knew she would have said yes if she had been asked that question. So she saved and improved the lives of five people with the gift of her heart, both kidneys, her liver, pancreas, and she gave sight with her cornea. And, you know, through that, just like all of you, set us on a completely different path in our life, right? And um, we started Taylor's Gift Foundation um, with a focus to share the importance of organ donation, but our mission is um, to support donor families in their grief. And we have a national uh, grief support program for donor families that's now in 20 states and growing. And it is specifically for grief of donor families um, because we all know on this call that the grief of a donor family is kind of unique. You've got the grief from the sudden loss, right? And that's awful combined with this like silver lining of gratitude that your loved one saved others. So it's really kind of where grief and gratefulness kind of share the same space and it's different than normal grief in a sense. So um, we just found there wasn't a lot of resources out there for the specific grief of a donor family. And so that's why we do what we do at Taylor's Gift, all in her name. Thank you, Tara. That's beautiful. I love that grief and, and gratefulness. That is amazing. And Donor Alliance is actually our home OPO and the, they're incredible. My brother-in-law was the same. He was light flighted from Grand Junction. Um, and lastly, I'd like to introduce Ileana, who is the Community and Government Liaison for Live On New York, who facilitates organ, eye, and tissue donation for transplantation. So I'd like to pass it over to Ileana. Okay, well, thank you so much for having us today. And I definitely look forward to um, answering the questions on the organ donation process. Awesome. Thanks, Ileana. So let's dive into some of those questions. Um, first, I'm going to throw it over to you, Ileana. Um, can you tell us about the organ donation process and what that process looks like for a donor, but also their family members? So the organ donation process involves several steps. So once a doctor notifies a family that their loved one has passed and provides an official time of death, um, or a family is given a grave prognosis and decides to remove their loved ones from a ventilator support system, the hospital makes a referral to Live on New York. Live on New York then reviews the patient's medical charts to establish donation suitability. So once the medical testing confirms that the patient is a suitable to be a donor, a Live on New York family support advocate will discuss the possibility of donation with the family and support and guide them through the process. The discussion includes either notifying the family that their loved one was a registered donor or educating them about donation and obtaining authorization. While the family waits for their loved one to be taken to the operating room for recovery, a family support advocate will participate in memory-making activities with the family. After the memory-making activities, the patient is transferred to the operating room for recovery, where transplant sensor surgeons and tissue sensors surgically recover organs and tissues. Following surgery, the patient's body is released to the funeral home of the family, choosing for final funeral arrangements. And that's usually the process on um, when someone decides to um, donate their loved one's organs. Amazing. And so each state has a different OPO that is there to support and guide donor families through the process. Um, and as Ileana mentioned, uh, you can either register ahead of time or, um, you know, if you're underage, your family can make that decision um, for you, um, as Katrina and Tara both did um, for their loved ones. Um, so next, I'm going to pass it over to Katrina. Um, do you feel that the, the decision for Jaleel to become an organ and tissue donor was important to your family? And can you share a little bit about how it was helpful during the grieving process? At the beginning, when we were approached by Live on New York um, to become 
to have Jalil become an organ donor. Um, of course, I was 18 years old and um, I was said before, you know, there was no discussion around the table, around dinner about becoming organ donors. Um, no one really talked about it. So when it was brought to me, um, <clears throat> it was such a chaotic moment. But the way that it was brought to me, it brought such a sense of peace. I really can't explain it, but it gave me another option, if that makes sense. And um, I said yes instantly. And my dad was there and him being, you know, my papa bear and always protecting me and ready to jump in. And I'm a daddy's girl. He automatically said no. And um, I kind of override him. And my first time ever, I said, no, I want to do this. And I think by me saying that, I made the best decision for myself and for my family um, going forward. Didn't know it exactly how then, but as the years rolled by, and when I went back to where it started for me with Live on New York and became a volunteer, <clears throat> and they actually... Um, let me know that the um, liver recipient was now 22 and having her own baby, it all came full circle for me. It, it, I didn't even realize after we're talking 23 years later and um, I started volunteering with Live on New York um, in 2020, I believe. And years later to even know that I still needed healing from that moment, you think that, you know, years go by, I had more kids, life happened, life was lifing, of course, and you think you're over it and you never get over it. It just gets bottled somewhere. But when I heard the news, I felt such an overwhelming of peace that came over me. And I didn't even know I needed to feel that. So my dad being this strong person and um, really never speaking about it because he was five weeks. You only have but so many, so much of a time frame to actually say his name. So we actually just stopped saying his name. We didn't forget about him, but we stopped saying his name. And now my dad is a volunteer at We Live on New York. And he didn't even realize that by him being able to say his grandson's name again, how much of a healing it gave us. And now the whole family is a part of the Live on New York family. And um, it brings us such joy because now Jalil is part of conversations. We're proud of him. We talk about him all the time as if he was here and he's still here with us. So being a donor mom and making that decision was the best thing I could have ever did for myself and for my family and for my son's legacy. Thanks for sharing that, Katrina. I think it's so important to note that not all, of, you know, it's a family, the whole family goes through the process, but it doesn't mean that the family goes through it the same way. Everybody has their different opinion, their different um, grieving, and each one needs to get to a place of peace um, in their own way. Um, so next, I'd like to throw it to Carol. Um, did you have the donation conversation with your family after saying yes at the driver's license office? Do you feel it's important to have these discussions with family and why do you feel that way? Um, we did have the conversation. Uh, my husband and I had had the conversation when I went to renew my license. So he was the impetus for me uh, becoming a donor. And I was so grateful that we had had that conversation because when he was going to become the donor himself, you know, while he was in the hospital, I had all of these very difficult conversations and with the doctors and decisions to make, but he wound up having um, a, a huge brain bleed and so he became brain dead. And now I didn't have a difficult decision. And because I knew what his decision had been and his whole family was all on the same page because they all knew what he wanted and felt the same way. So I think the importance of that decision is it, it, it can't be it can't be reminded. You can't tell people enough times that you, meet, you need to become a donor and you need to tell family. Everybody who you can needs to know 
that that's what you want so that there is no confusion once the hard stuff comes down to it. And of course, unfortunately for Katrina and Tara, whole different situation. But with me as an adult and my husband, we, and I, I highly encourage everybody to do that. Yeah, I think that, you know, that's so good because we all know this is not an easy topic, right? It's just not, it's not an easy topic to talk about. I mean, it's hard to sit around the dinner table and say, you know, hey, do you want to be an organ donor someday? Because immediately people think of death, right? But we all know on this call, it's all about life is what it's about. And so, you know, at, at Taylor's Gift, we have really worked hard to kind of change that conversation. And so we've used our, our part of it is we say, outlive yourself. You know, how do you want to outlive yourself and leave a lasting difference for the lives of others? And so that's how, you know, we really encourage conversation, like you're saying, Carol, is, you know, a way to bring it up to your families. You know, how do you want to outlive yourself? How do you want to leave a lasting legacy? And, you know, and for me, I want to save lives someday. So it's an easier way to talk about it. Um, so, but you're right. The conversation is so important. So important. I, I love the term outlive yourself. I really, I, cause that's a great way to look at it. I'm going to use that if you don't mind. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Yeah. Please do. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. Um, it is a very important conversation. Some things people don't know is that, you know, like just because you register to be an organ donor does not mean that you will become an organ donor at the time of your death. There are a lot of things that have to fall into place before someone is able or deemed to be an organ donor. And I think that that's a, a big misconception. And um, I think it's also, you know, lack of information. And which is why, you know, here I live on New York, specifically our community and government affairs team, um, we do a lot of educational presentations and we do a lot of educational tabling just to inform the community about these things, not only inform them of what the power of donation is, but just also demystifying the myths that are out there about donation. There's so many times we'll be talking to kids, uh, I mean, and parents, you know, out tabling and the, the sort of kid will turn, mom, I want to be a donor. And then you'll see the mom sort of look at their child and say, well, but I've heard this. And we're all sort of standing there going, no, <laughs> that is a complete misconception. Let us tell you the truth. And the kid is looking at the mom going, no, I learned this in school, mom. I know this is the decision I want to make. And there's nothing more powerful than hearing, you know, a child look at their parent and say, I want to save lives. And that's my decision. Um, and yeah, a hundred percent, the myths that are out there, if you're looking for a way to dispel them, I know Live on New York has, uh, numerous tools out there at CKF. We have a free curriculum for elementary, middle, and high school students all to learn about what organ donation is, what transplantation is, and bust those myths for them and help them learn, you know, the actual facts and the truth behind it. So I'm going to throw it back to Tara. Um, Every donor family and even family members journeys is different. How do you feel your experience different from others in your family or other donor families that you have met? And have you reached out to others going through a similar process? Yeah, you know, I mean, I think the decision was so important. And, you know, I think everybody's donation experience is different. You know, I mean... Even speaking to other donor families, I mean, Carol's was different from mine, Katrina's, I mean, we're all in different, you know, boats in a sense. And it's also an extremely, in that moment, you are in the worst day of your life, right? So the way your family handles it around you, the way you handle it is is just all so different, right? There's just not a cookie cutter way that this goes. Um, and sometimes, you know, there are times where families that I've met who the loved one wanted to be a donor, but because of like medical reasons or, you know, what whatever for the organ or can't be done, they become donors in spirit. And there's there's a different kind of grief process in there too. So, um, you know, we have talked to a lot of donor families just for, you know, the mission of our foundation. And um, I also think not only is everybody's donation experience so different, um, their grief journeys are also so different, right? Um, and so it, it's just so important to be able to kind of have 
to love them where they are because it is such a, everybody's on this completely different roller coaster. And I love what Katrina said, you know, they kind of put on pause talking about him for a while. And that's also part of the grief, you know, where it's one of those things where people don't want to bring up his name because they don't want to make it harder for you. So they just don't say him at all. And so it's all those kind of things that are wrapped into it. But I mean, I think being a donor family really has brought purpose to the pain. Um, and given it, it's, it is truly like just the silver lining to the loss to know that our loved ones in their final act on this earth was of service to others. And I mean, just what a beautiful thing that is. It's so powerful. Um, you know, my family being a donor family and a transplant family or transplant candidate family, we see both sides on, um, you know, watching them. I came mm-hmm. in sort of six months after my brother-in-law passed away and you know everyone at that point my husband future husband at that point was in a state of anger my brother-in-law was in a my second brother-in-law was in a complete state of denial it didn't occur um he could not talk about it um their mom was very much moving through it and dealing with it and probably further steps ahead of where she actually was she felt she was um and so really seeing Mm -hmm. each of them go through it and being able to sort of be that person not without an emotional connection but a sounding board to each of them in a different way I think is so important to have that person you know that can't can't relate in any way but is there for whatever you feel and can answer you know as best to their ability um to support you, uh, through that, that process is so important as well as having, you know, people who that's a good point. You know, I think, you know, my husband grieved completely different than for me. My son was with Taylor on the mountain and saw everything. So he had grief and trauma. And then our other daughter didn't see it because she was with me down at the bottom of the mountain. So we all were kind of having these different experiences. Right. But you know, being around others that can say they understand is so important. And and that's actually, I mean, just part of our grief support program is that we offer peer to peer support to those who um, are walking this similar journey because it's being around, like you said, this, that support of people who understand, who have kind of walked that with you. um, is just so important and having that system. Yeah, Definitely. definitely. And I'm now going to move to Ileana. Um, What resources are out there for donor families and how can these resources help and assist families and friends? Families of organ donors often go through a challenging and emotional process. Several sources of support and assistance are available to help them cope and navigate this difficult journey. Specifically with Live On New York, we have departments like our Family Support Advocate, our Volunteer Services Department, our Aftercare Services, and also our Community and Government Affairs Department. These resources that these departments offer include memory-making activities, individual support sessions, workshops, grieving counselors, uh, specialized support groups, and also opportunities and the platform to share their loved one's legacy and story through storytelling and um, tabling at tables where we're trying to educate communities on the importance of organ, eye, and tissue donation. So the resources are definitely there. The support groups come in different forms. They can come either in person or even Facebook support groups. And during these support groups, these families get to talk to other families who've had the same experience of donating a loved one's organs. And obviously, you know, everyone has a different story because it comes about differently for everyone. Thanks, Ileana. And I just want to pass that out sort of to the whole whole group and see, you know, is there a specific resource that really helped you? Is there a specific tool that you've utilized through through your grieving? Um, if anyone wants to add to that. Um, well, for me, it was it was Live One New York that um, that helped me um, in every which way I um I think using this platform and volunteering for them 
and just being able to tell my story. And the one thing I didn't realize, you know, my story lasted five weeks and I didn't realize how powerful my story was. Um, and by when I first, I remember when I first stood up and told my story and I saw the emotions and how um, the audience was so moved by it and how I actually changed a couple of mindsets afterwards coming up to me and letting me know your story moved me, made me feel, you know, this way and that way. And I'm sitting back like, really? <laughs> but it gave me such a sense of joy um, because it was like, oh my God, I, I, I understand now. I understand my purpose. I understand what I need to do. I understand what I need to do with my son's legacy. It didn't just stop that day. Um, this is a message that I need to carry on and tell everyone that is willing to listen to me about it. You know, so now I go into hospitals and I go into um, state senators offices and, you know, I go on radio shows and I just, whoever wants to hear my little five week story and listen to it, I tell it. I think that um, it helped me um, show that. I think when you're a donor um, family member, um, we're a face of grief, a different type of grief. Um, and to make it make sense more, you know, whenever anybody thinks about someone passing away or a loved one passing away, you just become very overwhelmed with so many different emotions and it can bring you down. It can make you depressed. It can, you know, mess with your mental. And I think as, donor families, we come in here, you know, we're smiling. We see, we feel joy. We feel happiness. We're teaching that there's another way to grieve. Even if you wasn't able to make that decision, there's another option than just, you know, wanting to go in a corner and just live the rest of your life out under a blanket. Cause I know I felt that way for years. And as I started going out there and being with Live on New York and volunteering my services and meeting other donor families, it made me want to come from under those covers and, you know, see life a little bit different and spread a message that's so important and didn't even know how important it was at the time. So it, it, it was um, it was Live on New York for me. That's so great. I mean, that that five weeks just sparked a whole ripple effect of good for you. Right. I mean. It did. I mean, it, it did yeah. <laughs> and so didn't even amazing. realize it. Yeah. And I'm so grateful, so grateful for the journey. Um, so, so grateful for what I've learned. And, you know, it just, it, 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 it built a fire in me that I am anytime Anna calls, live on New York calls someone. Yep. I will take off from work. I would, whatever I need to do. <laughs> yep. As you can see, I'm sitting here on a Tuesday working from <laughs> home to do this right now. <laughs> oh, that's so great. So great. Yes. Well, for me, it was, it was, I, I had a grief counselor. Um, and when she first, you know, was introduced to me, I immediately said, no, I don't want to go to counseling. No, you know, I'm not doing that. And then I heard, that she had also lost a child. And that was an immediate connection point. It's like, okay, she gets it, right? And so talking to someone who was a grief counselor who truly had walked that loss of losing a child um, was a huge help to me and my husband too. So yeah, that was good to have someone that had walked it because she could say things to me that other people couldn't, right? That really had never walked it. Um, so that was, that's what helped me. Uh, for me, I took advantage of Live On New York's uh, grief counseling. And it happened to be the year of COVID 2020. And so we did it all online. And it really made me um, connect with other people, as you were saying, Tara, that have, have experienced that that loss and know what you're talking about because so many other people they've never been there and they were all widows who had been with their husbands for a very long time so we all understood each other which was nice but I also recognized that I was stuck in hatred 
I was so angry that I actually went to hate. And that, I mean, that's the only way I can explain it. And I start to say to myself, you can't live like this. You can't be this person. And knowing that Live On was there and they did so much for me to try to help me, I needed to help myself. And the only way to do that was to give back. So I went to, to Live On. I, I must have gotten an email or something that said, would you like to be a volunteer? And I said, yes. And that really brought things around for me because now I can open up my heart again and I, I don't feel hatred and I, you know, I don't usually feel hatred, but that's how strong my, my grief was for me. And what so, a beautiful testimony to live on New York and just uh, how they have really, you know, just, you know, giving, giving back to others helps us, right? Oh, absolutely. Um, and so that is just really has changed the trajectory of the grief journey. I mean, because, yes. right, Katrina, I mean, staying underneath the blanket is what I did for a long time, too. I mean, that was, believe me, it was, it was not, it was a very dark period of life. Um, but then being able to serve others, you know, really kind of gets you, I love how you said it, gets you away from the blanket, out of the blanket, um, which is such a good description of that. Thank you all for sharing. Um, and yeah, I definitely can see a sort of similarity in a way between each of your stories is it's not an immediate um, sort of wanting to give back. There's time and it's never too late to decide that you're ready to talk to someone or to reach out um, and ask for help, reach out to any, you know, there's the OPOs, this Taylor's Gift, Chris Kluge Foundation, um, all of these different resources out there ready, waiting to help you um, in any way that we can. And, you know, please reach out and say, I'm ready to volunteer. Or I'm ready just to hear, have someone hear my story. Um, and I'm sure everyone on this panel will agree. We're all here and we will happily hear your story. Um, so I want to just ask Katrina, um, have you had an opportunity to communicate with your loved ones recipients? So unfortunately not. I want to so bad. I really do. Um, I haven't had the chance to um, the live on New York was able to, as I stated before, find the liver recipient. And um, I found out she was having a baby and, you know, my baby gave her life and now she's given life. But um, I will say this. I haven't had a chance to meet my um, two recipients. But I have worked alongside of transplant recipients for a few years now. And when I meet someone who has had a heart transplant and I look at them and like, oh, my God, this is what my son did for someone. So it's like I'm meeting them. It's not my son's heart, but it's someone else's heart that gave this person life. And I feel an instant connection because it's he's showing me they're showing me what I did and what is happening in their life and they're living and they graduated from school and I've met one that said they were able to walk down the aisle of their brother's wedding um one that you know was able to continue on with life and I'm just I I feel like I met my recipient so unfortunately I didn't but kind of sense I did, if that makes sense. Thank you for sharing that. And anyone else want to add to that? I know this was a question we received a lot ahead of this, this webinar, um, you know, what other people's experiences were with connecting with recipients. So we, we have been blessed to meet four out of the five recipients, which is, I know, very rare. Um, and we are just grateful that they were responsive you know, um, and let us in their life. And, um, so it's, it, it's been pretty amazing to kind of have that connection with them. It really is. But I've also just like Katrina said, met other recipients. We have recipients who are on our board and friends with lots of recipients and just seeing them, um, live their life. Cause we're not around Taylor's recipients on the, on a daily, but living, seeing those that I I'm connected with, really, really often, just see how they're living their life, just really just validates the decision we made that it was the right thing to do for our family. 
Yeah, I think so many people, post-transplant and recipients, you know, they really do take that le- second lease of life and they run with it and they want to achieve everything in honor of their donor um, and really celebrate them. Um, Chris, you know, all his whole Olympic uh, career is, I saw a post today that said, you know, he used his own snowboard, but someone else's liver. And he he always says, I took them to the Olympics with me. And there was no better feeling than when I got to the bottom and my donor family was at the bottom of the Olympic Games waiting and cheering me on. And having uh, my donor there with me was so special. So, yeah, I think that's, that's so true. Um, thank you all for sharing. Um, so, Carol, I'm going to throw back to you as an advocate for organ, eye, and tissue donation. How has your involvement with Donate the Donate Life community impacted your life? And how can another family become involved in the Donate Life community? For me, being a volunteer helps me to remember how grateful I need to be. Because when you talk to other people and you do hear their stories, uh, I'm grateful that I'm here and I'm able to share. And I know that somewhere out there, even though I haven't met uh, the recipient of Pat's organs. I know he's out there and I, it makes me so grateful to know that even though I personally wasn't able to do it, I'm proud to be the wife of somebody who did make a difference in someone's life. So being a donor just shines gratefulness back into my heart for me. And I, as far as anybody else getting involved, I think you just have to reach out. Reach out to Live On or any other organization that you know of that might have helped you. And I think every one of these OPOs or any organization will be there to just snatch you up and say, sure, let me help you help others. And we all will work together and, and heal together. So it's all about reaching out, not being afraid. And can I just add too, it's, it's such a community you know, working with Live on New York, and I'm sure Carol can understand with Live on New York, it's a whole community that you enter once you accept the invites. We are all here. We just hug on each other. We just love up on each other. And we just let them know that you're not in this by yourself. Our journeys are different. As Tara said, our grief journeys are different but we all come together and have the same common denominator and that's being here to support each other and to love up on each other. So I, whenever I, you know, bring in or help bring in another um, uh, donor family, I just let them know that you are now a part of a community forever, to be honest. (laughs) So I I just had to mention that. I wanted to add and chime in and just say that it is a lifelong relationship uh, full of love and support and we all cry together we all smile together and it's just very beautiful to be a part of um, a community where everyone you know everyone is sympathetic everyone understands and everyone just have has a open arms and just waiting for people to just express themselves and share their stories and we love pictures <laughs> we love seeing pictures <laughs> yes I think uh, my favorite, one of my favorite moments, you know, becoming or joining the Donate Life community um, when I joined CKF was the transplant games. And so I went in thinking I was just going to be surrounded by a bunch of transplant recipients. And I was like, this is going to be great. This is going to be amazing. And then you get talking to people and you're like, so how are you related to transplant? And they're like, well, I'm a donor mom or I'm a donor uncle or I'm a donor cousin. And the whole family is there. And everyone is from completely different walks of life, completely different childhoods, everything. And they are there loving each other. And it has never been such a room of positive people. Um, I've never been in such a room like it. And so I think that's a great tool. Um, And a lot of donor families are sort of hesitant to go. And once you go, you will never not go to a transplant games <laughs> because there's just such love and camaraderie and everything um, in one room. Okay, so the last question of the day for Tara, um, what does the decision to sign up to be an organ donor mean to you and to your family after you know Taylor's decision to give the gift of life and your decision? 
Wow. I mean, um, like I previously said, you know, we had not talked about organ donation in our family, not even once. I mean, I think my husband and I had checked it off on our license, you know, but it was not a conversation. And now it's just such an eye opening thing when it personally happens to you that all of a sudden you, you start hearing that it's happened to others and it's happened to others. And it becomes this like, um, normal conversation, right? Something that was kind of scary before becomes something that I'm so passionate about sharing and being uh, passionate about, you know, how to share, how to outlive yourself and, and really what that means and that it's about life is what it's about. Um, and I think it's just, you know, before it was not something I thought about at all. And now I think Katrina, Carol, <laughs> Ileana, we're all on this path to make sure that it's something that is talked about. It is something that's heard. It's something that is um, good and um, needed and um, creates such a ripple effect of good for many. Um, and what it gives really it's, it's not just a, a gift of an organ or tissue. It is a gift of time. It's a gift of memories. It's a gift of experiences. It's a gift of more birthdays and anniversaries. It's, it's just those gifts that it's so much more than just an organ, right, that is given. And I think that is just really what we're all trying to share here is that it gives life, but it also creates life through those memories and experiences that the recipients are given. And, you know, it all starts from that one yes. All of that is sparked from that one yes when we're asked those questions, when that asked that question in the hospital. Um, and thank God our family said yes. And I'm sure Carol and Katrina <laughs> feel this exact same way that very grateful that that word was yes for us. After talking to so many families being in this role, I've definitely heard a lot of people say, you know, it's a gift for the recipient, but it also helps inspire a donor family to, you know, sort of continue the message and give them, a, like you said, a purpose um, out of their loss and really help them, um, you know, continue with, with that um, afterwards. Um, and so sort of to close out this session, I always like to just ask the panel if there was something you could say to a donor family today that um, had just lost their loved one or with or an individual looking thinking about signing up, what advice would you give to them um, after after being through through everything? I guess I'll jump in and my biggest is advice is to seek company seek to talk about your emotions and um, seek support because there is a lot out there. Uh, specifically, again, we live on New York. You get to meet great people and um, yeah, seek support. Yeah, I would say, you know, you're, you're, you may hear things like time heals all wounds and, but I don't think time really heals completely, but it sure helps you that this, that sting of grief will lessen. It will. And that if you're just starting this journey, how you feel today is not how you will always feel. Um, that will change over time and you will find a lightness and you will find your smile back. Um, and just know you're not alone in this at all. We've got support out there. Live on New York, Taylor's gift, Chris. I mean, we've got, beautiful support here on this call for you to um, reach out to. Just like Ileana said, just reach out and you will get a quick response back. I guarantee it. And to piggyback off what Tara said, um, everybody's grief journey is different and it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to cry and to feel every emotion that you are feeling. There is nothing weird about it. There's no time frame on it. You know, people, what I've, I've learned 
doing this, um, people will start saying, well, it's been a year. I should feel this already and I'm not. And then go deeper into a depression or, you know, they've seen somebody else grief journey and how they came out of it so fast or so it seemed so easy, but not knowing what that person had to go through just to put that smile on their face. And it's okay to not be okay. And as long as you surround yourself with a community or, you know, find help, a grief counselor, um, a support group, a friend, someone that would be there with you to walk through the process and hear your story a million times over, you know, it's okay. And um, to decide to make the decision on given life. I just simply just say, just, just do it. <laughs> just, just do it. It's, it's, it leaves a legacy. And, um, you know, my dad, when he starts to go into his, um, his, uh, speech about our, about my son, he talks about, you know, the dash in the middle on your tombstone, how you have the date of um, your birth and then the date of your death. It's what you do in that little itty bitty dash in between that makes the difference and that creates your legacy. And what do you want your dash to look like? What do you want your legacy to look like? And, you know, for me and my family, we want the legacy to look like we gave life. You know, we gave somebody else a chance. And even though if it may not even go that way at the time, but we at least we put it out there that we want that option if it is available to us. Carol, did you want to add anything? I don't know how I could add to that. All of that. That was great. <laughs> um, the only thing I would say is that I, we have to remember that a loss is a loss. And like everyone else says, you have to give yourself time and surround yourself with as much support as you can possibly give yourself. And I also found that I had people that were not that supportive in my life and I had to drop them. So I also feel like move away from the people that aren't giving you the support and the love that you need, regardless of who they are. Take that little separation, take care of yourself, let the supporters support you, hold you up, drag you through whatever. Don't be afraid to grab on and hold on tight to people who will lift you and carry you. And sometimes you have to do that by stepping out and going with other people and and becoming a donor and, and a volunteer and helping others do what you need done for yourself. Thank you. Thank you all for sharing today, uh, sharing your journeys, um, continuing to be a voice for organ donation. Um, and yeah, joining us on this panel today. Um, so that is all of my questions, uh, that I have for you all. Uh, again, thank you so much. Thank you to anyone tuning in to today's session. We hope you found it inspiring, informative. And again, if you have any questions about, uh, the webinar today or anything we have coming up, please head to the Chris Klug Foundation.org. Um, we hope you have a great rest of your day. Stay safe, stay healthy, and continue to live life, give life. Mm -hmm.